New York's attorney general is suing the founder of the now bankrupt crypto platform Celsius Network. The AG's office claims Alex Mashinsky engaged in a, quote, scheme to defraud hundreds of thousands of investors by using false and misleading representations to induce them to deposit billions of dollars in digital assets with Celsius Network. The complaint alleges Mashinsky promised customers Celsius was a safe alternative to banks while concealing the platform was engaging in risky investment strategies. Celsius filed for bankruptcy in July of 2022. Big news for everybody involved in cryptocurrency. This is information you need to know about. Of course, this is why you subscribe to our channel. Turn the notifications on so you can be the first to hear about it or follow us on Twitter, link below. The information is as follows. A federal judge ruled that customers of Celsius's interest-bearing <laughs> earn product had turned over control of their assets to Celsius, the now bankrupt crypto lender, meaning those assets are part of the company's bankruptcy estate. The short version is he said that the terms of service for Celsius were, quote, unambiguous in ruling that uh, assets held and deposited on the Celsius Earn platform belong to Celsius, not to the customers. Meaning, <coughs> and according to this judge, users gave up their legal right to the oh. With Create Studio Pro, you can create amazing 3D character explainers just like. And here we go with this. Oh, I know where it is. Hold on. Just pull it back up so we can just speed through it. New York's attorney on. general is super. Okay, it was probably right here. Oh, you being a slow bitch. New York's attorney general is suing the founder of the now bankrupt crypto platform Celsius. At uh, assets held and deposited on the Celsius Earn platform belong to Celsius, not to the customers. Meaning. And according to this judge, users gave up their legal right to their Bitcoin by using the Celsius platform, and all 4.2 billion of crypto deposits into Celsius are now property of Celsius. What the judge said is that, you know, Celsius customers who deposited their funds into the earned product essentially turned over the ownership of these funds to Celsius because that's what Celsius said was happening. This is what the judge wrote. The court concludes. Based on Celsius's unambiguous terms of use and subject to any reversed defenses, that when the cryptocurrency assets, including stablecoins, were deposited in Celsius Earn accounts, the cryptocurrency assets became Celsius's property, and the cryptocurrency assets remaining in the earned accounts on the petition date became the property of the debtor's bankruptcy estates. Why is this significant? This is pretty significant because there's a number of crypto lenders that are currently going through bankruptcy, and there's a couple other platforms out there that, uh, you know, they're not bankrupt, and we don't know for sure what exactly the state of finances are, but they've kind of indicated some warning signals. This ruling, allowing Celsius to retain control over the assets in its earn account, will have ramifications for crypto investors using similar products across other platforms, a number of which have also entered bankruptcy in recent months. The <laughs> okay, so this is one of the key reasons, right, why um, crypto exchanges are so reluctant to register themselves. It's not just that they're reluctant, it's that they can't, it's also that they can't register themselves as financial institutions, as securities exchange holders. One, because if they did, they would have to actually be beholden to real regulation, which, you know, the crypto world for the most part is still trying to avoid as long as they can, but as a result, everybody's scamming people left and right. But also again, like this pointed out, Oftentimes what happens is these platforms like, oh, we don't have to give you your shit. You know, that wasn't the case for FTX in the terms of service FTX. They weren't able in the terms of service, which is why it was even more egregious. They weren't supposed to be able to use their customers funds for any kind of speculative investment for anything at all. It was supposed to sit there. Right. But, you know, this basically Celsius is like, oh, we got billions of dollars worth of people's coins and it, it's ours. So, you know, I mean, uh, unless unless we just totally do away with crypto um, exchanges 
and just let crypto be totally unregulated. If crypto is totally unregulated, then it's going to be much less used. First and foremost, it won't gain its like massive popularity. That won't happen if there isn't some type of real societal oversight. It just won't, which maybe some people are cool with. You know, they maybe for, for some people, that's fine because they can you know, develop their own education systems in terms of like maybe in the house, they can teach their kids how to use crypto in, in private schools, they can teach them. But if crypto is to become this massive thing, which at this point is really, extreme, I mean, anybody should be skeptical of that, then you're going to have to assure that these platforms can't just hold people's money, take people's shit, not ensure their investments, you know, because, you know, I mean, what was FTX doing? What do these platforms do for the most part? They invest in other cryptocurrencies, which are just backed by confidence and faith. You know what I'm saying? It's not backed by it, it, it's not backed by the reputation or the strength of, of a nation. It, it's backed by the amount of money that people are throwing into it and how much they believe it has a future. You know what I'm saying? So you know, we'll, we'll continue it now, but it's just so, it's just so interesting to think about because, you know, blockchain technology absolutely has its pluses. It absolutely, you know, in terms of just, um, it being like often how crypto scammers get caught is because people go through the blockchain and enough coincidental evidence leads to like, okay, this person is, you know, they have these pools of liquidity that they're not supposed to touch so that if people want their money back, they can get it. And then it's like, oh, well, all of your your wallets are showing that you're taking money out of this liquidity pool and it's all going back to this wallet. Well, this wallet doesn't have this person's name on it. But then again, just through investigations and, 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 and um, you know, uh, logic and procedure, people end up finding out that, oh, these motherfuckers is just scamming people. So blockchain does have its uses. It's an endless receipt, basically, of any time people make transactions. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that even outside of just financial transaction, um, and I say that, uh, you know, I'm not very familiar with all the other uses that it has, but I'm sure that it has plenty of great uses in terms of uh, encryption and stuff like that. But I mean, come on, like at this point, if, if you if, if people don't acknowledge that cryptocurrency needs some serious oversight, then, I mean, come on. If you don't, and again, like I said, if you don't want the oversight, then it's just going to have to be something that's totally independent. Like, because I mean, if, if people don't have help managing their crypto and following what's going on in the crypto market and knowing which cryptos to invest in, then motherfuckers ain't going to do it. So, come on. All right. So, we, let's continue. TLDR for, you know, crypto customers is that really read the terms of service of the platforms you're using. Um, I, that, that's really what it comes down to. We're talking about a very specific lender right now. Yes. Yes. If, especially if you're going to get involved with this shit, read the terms of service, because often in the terms of service, it literally will say, we do not have to give you your money back. It will say that. You know what I'm saying? And because it says that, they can't and don't register themselves as financial institutions or as securities exchange platforms because it, regulated financial institutions are insured up to a certain amount because they have to follow more strict regulation than fucking crypto. So read the terms of service. Know what you're getting yourself into. Oh, but if you're using an exchange, if you're using another lender, if you're using really any kind of you know crypto platform where you're giving them your assets, uh, it probably a similar situation would happen if they also ended up going into bankruptcy or for whatever reason had to suspend withdrawals. And yet that, my friends, is just the tip of the iceberg. Celsius's Mashinsky finally sued by the New York Attorney General. It's about damn time. New York's Attorney General is suing the founder of the now bankrupt crypto platform Celsius Network. The AG's office claims Alex Mashinsky engaged in a, quote, scheme to defraud hundreds of thousands of investors by using false and misleading representations to induce them to deposit billions of dollars in digital assets with Celsius Network. The complaint alleges Mashinsky promised customers Celsius was a safe alternative to banks while concealing the platform was engaged. 
Hey, have you ever heard something like this before? Who wants to make a zillion dollars online without having to do a single thing? Just send me the money and I'll make all your dreams. Hold on, what is he talking about? Now, chances are you've heard. Okay, he also sold it some. I thought he was going to get into some investigative shit. He's like, have you ever heard of motherfucking scamming online? Well, I'm about to scam your ass too. <laughs> Investment strategies. Sales has filed for bankruptcy in July of 2022. My question to you is, and please take two seconds and give us your thoughts in the comments section below, because this is an ongoing trial. We need to hear from the crypto community. My question to you is, do you think Alex Mashinsky told lies, mistruths, misrepresentations about the company throughout Celsius's whole entire lifespan, did. let alone the six months what prior to them holding like, no. withdrawals? <laughs> the number one question from people is, are our funds safe at Celsius? Can you address that for the audience? Yes. So not just that they're safe, again, we provided anyone who wanted to withdraw partially or fully um, they there were, were no problems I, I want any one of you anyone who got wrecked on Celsius to say sorry I got wrecked on Celsius let's see if you have one guy one person right why because you can't take leverage you cannot lose money right I mean that's the whole point so, so right, what does that say? what does that shit say not lose money right he, he just said show me one person he says my grandmother committed my grandmother, well, my channel isn't monetized yet anyway, so I can say this shit now. My my grandmother committed suicide yesterday after she confronted me about her retirement being put into Celsius. Again, this is what these motherfuckers are doing to people. You feel me? And again, like once your shit, and I, I said that to say like once your shit's monetized, you can't say like suicide and shit, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm My channel is so, but again, like, what the fuck? Like, th th these people are shameless. Like, right? I mean, that's the whole point. So, so right? And, and Celsius takes full responsibility. If anything goes bad, we take full responsibility. That's part of why we raised the 750 million. And Celsius has $2 billion in our balance sheet. BlockFi has less than 25 million. That's why they're running around town trying to raise money. Because they lose, and, and now we have over two billion dollars on our balance sheet. Again, more than anybody else. Ask Nexo how much they have on their balance sheet, right? Ask Blockfi how much they have on their balance sheet, right? Ask all these people, right? So what's important? For so we we are what's called a delta neutral strategy, meaning we're not Celsius doesn't bet on the market going up or down. Our job is just to take advantage of difference in prices between, for example, future and spot. Or between uh, we've been doing the same thing for five years right we haven't changed anything we're doing and now we're helping even more people and uh, for example Celsius is 900 employees we raised one of the largest rounds of funding 750 million we have an open book we have proof of reserves right we have all the things we have more proofs than any bank we tell you exactly how do we make money where do we deploy what percentage goes here we show you every week we show our financials right but unlike the banks that do that and keep all the profit to themselves, in the crypto world, we give most of the profits or most of the yield back to the community. Now, banks absolutely have their issues. But one of the key differences between banks and crypto exchanges is that, one, banks are insured, obviously, up to a certain amount, $250,000, I believe. But that's still more than nothing. And... Uh, the likelihood of a bank just going belly up completely is not high compared to crypto exchanges. It just isn't. You know what I'm saying? And, and one of the most important reasons is because banks invest in things that actually have value. Crypto exchanges invest in cryptocurrencies. They invest in shit coins for the most part because they have a bunch of crypto on their platforms, not really a bunch of hard cash. I mean, the cash gets converted into stable coins, but then they end up committing a bunch of fraud so they don't have the fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Banks can only do so much because they're regulated up to a point. And again, banks invest in land. They invest land, um, find, you know, like uh, metals, gold and shit, which is, you know, people can debate about that, but they invest in that. They invest in fine art. They invest in other businesses. They make acquisitions. They invest in things that actually make them wealthy. You feel me? But crypto, they invest in Sh Shina Ibu coins and Dink Doink coins and 
You know what I'm saying? So then motherfuckers' money just completely evaporates. So that's the difference. So that always kills me when these people act like, oh, the, 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 there's well, either it's there's no difference from banks or banks are just like, oh, they're that the, the, you can find you can't find anything on banks like that really is not true. It, it just isn't. You feel me? Meanwhile, these motherfuckers got people out here committing suicide and they don't give a damn. Something, something bad happens with the Celsius deployment. The Celsius standing behind it. Yep. They're standing behind it. That's where companies are tested. Right. Because when they when they blow up, when they uh, run away or when they don't perform or they don't deliver, it's too late for you. You cannot just go back to the decision. Right. So those are all the things that Celsius shot. I'm reading some of your comments now, and it seems you agree that Mashinsky needs to feel the heat. The details are as follows. Alex Mashinsky is finally facing consequences for his mishandling of Celsius. New York Attorney General Lalita James filed a civil- Letitia James! She don't be bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? She, she don't. She, she don't be bullshitting. Civil lawsuit against the former Celsius CEO earlier today. The filing accuses Mashinsky of making false statements to investors about Celsius's financial situation. Quote, Alex Mashinsky lied to people about the risks of investing in Celsius, hid its deteriorating financial condition, and failed to register in New York. She claimed he had defrauded hardworking people by promising them big returns, but had only left them in financial ruin. Let me refresh your memory on how exactly Celsius got here. Once a leading crypto company, Celsius froze customer fund withdrawals in early June, citing extreme market conditions. The firm subsequently filed for bankruptcy. The news was met with consternation, outrage, and threats of suicide from customers, some of whom claimed to have lost their entire life savings to the platform. Court filings subsequently revealed that the company had a 1.19 billion hole in its balance sheet. Celsius insiders have claimed the hole was particularly due to Mashinsky's using customer funds to directionally trade Bitcoin against the advice of multiple senior figures at the firm. So again, like, and again, the diff one of the other key differences between crypto exchanges and banks is these banks are old as fuck. They got old money. They got infrastructure. These crypto fucking exchanges are like, oh, we're we're twelve months old, and we we, we know better than the banks. We know. We know finance better than all you like. No, you're just a bunch of fucking fraud ass scamming motherfuckers. Like fucking Chase Bank and Bank of America and all these goddamn banks have been around for a long time. And that doesn't dissolve them of their guilt and whatever types of fraud that they commit. But again, it's you, you just it's like banks are an elephant and crypto exchanges are like a fucking roach on the ground like get the fuck out of here months after filing for bankruptcy mashinsky suggested rebranding celsius to kelvin and to move forward with the company by focusing on crypto custody services he resigned shortly thereafter we'll continue to keep you updated on this story subscribe to the channel we're going to all right so that was that was my first time watching that video uh, as well